How's it going, everybody? So today I'm taking a look at Citizen Sleeper. So this came on my radar a while ago, uh, where it just looked like a sci-fi role-playing game, largely text-based, so hopefully it's still an interesting watch. But uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Citizen Sleeper 2 announced. That explains why it was on sale. <laughs> All right, main game. All right, so now we choose our character class. Looks like we have Operator, Machinist, Extractor. Okay, so there's five of our stats. Looks like each one has a plus one and minus one to something. Machinist. A machinist repairs and modifies automated systems and used in industrial resource extraction. Sleepers assigned to machinists are usually diligent, careful, and structured people. Efficient extractor perk, chance to gain random scrap item on engineer actions. Okay, then we have operator. An operator works with drones and high precision remote machines to perform complex tasks from a distance. Sleepers assigned to operator work are usually cerebral and precise people. Transfer intercept, chance to gain cryo on interface actions. Don't know what that means. And extractor, extractors work on human or whoop, not human, on resource extraction, often hard vacuum environments. Perk, photosynthetic skin, sunbathe dice action allows energy recovery at home. So it looks like there's dice actions, so there are rolls. Um, let's see if I can just decide from here. So we have engineer, work with machines and physical tools, minus one engage, approach a problem head on. Operators, minus one to endure, which is strength or strength of will, plus one, work with digital interfaces, and extractor, plus one to endure, minus one to intuit. Let's start with machinist, because it seems like chance to gain random scrap item on engineer actions, that makes sense to me currently, with the limited information I have. First thing you become aware on the first thing you become aware of on awaking is the disconnect, the delay between thinking and feeling, between wanting to act and acting, minor, almost imperceptible, but always present. It's at its worst when waking, when yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it felt like to be a real, to be real, to be a person, to be in a body that was indisputably yours. Think of that body. A leap into a cold lake on a hot day, the sting of blood welling from a fresh wound, the friction of a fingertip. All of a sudden the memories are closer than you thought, blurring as you approach, until you can't tell one from the other. Unknown, where are you? The cold slips in, behind and around you, and sensations fade out of reach. Perhaps you should be thankful for the dulled nature of this new body, given your current circumstances. The walls of the container feel immediately present. Cold, hard, at the back and at your back and face, cramping your limbs. You resist the desire to stretch, knowing that the claustrophobia comes next, and retreat a little from your central nervous system. It isn't painful, not like you used to know pain, at least. In emergency mode, pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease, a reminder that harm is imminent. There is no insistent throb, no trembling nerves, just a warning delivered with a banal quality of a digital notification. Right now, there are thousands of them. You remember that it wasn't a good plan, but then your options were limited, and once you got the itch to, and once you got the itch to get out, by any means possible, it was either that plan or something much worse. It was at least simple. Collapse the shaft, drift away into the chaos, slip into cargo processing, seal yourself into the containers, and just hope the freighter left before you were missed. So I'm trying to escape? Some were lost in the shaft, others never found the meeting point. Only a few made it to the containers, but the freighter, as far as you know, left. That feels like enough. Enough to know that you might no longer be on that grim and heartless rock, even if, in the airless hold of a freighter, you might freeze solid long before you reach any destination. Try to rest, but you are restless. But you are restless. It has been a long time since you left, surely weeks, maybe months. You are dully aware of damage to your legs, your right arm. You have been... You have been reserving energy as much as possible, but your body is still needed to shut down many of its systems to protect you. You have spent so much of that time of... You've spent much of that time asleep, 
knowing that anything else would be impossible to endure. You feel the weight of that impossibility begin to gather. It's time to sleep again, to nudge this false body into inducing delta waves in your emulated mind, and once again, recoil into a dream where you were once a person. Time passes, the cold creeps further in. You feel something. Warmth. Not true, not true warmth, but the indication of its presence. Your joints release from their rigor. Sound, too. Everywhere. Screeching and shimmering so loud that your body ducks your hearing to protect its sensors. Then, light. White as the cold. Softer and softer, until in a haze of dirty yellow, a figure appears. You are out. Pragmatic Salvager. It's been a few hours since Dragos pulled you from the container. You sit huddled in a corner of his scrapyard, swaddled in the reflective folds of a mylar blanket. You are slowly coming back to consciousness, back to life, and you stare at the ornately curving element of an improvised heater. You are surrounded by angular, incoherent lumps of ships, some corroded beyond recognition, others still carrying glassy wounds along their edges where a plasma arc sliced them apart. As you trace their shapes with fogged eyes, you hear a voice. So, sleeper, you all thawed yet? Almost. Never seen one of you come in like this. New frames must have better perseverance in Sub-Zero Vac. Seen more than a few of you frozen solid to hull plates or inside outer locks in my time. They weren't so lucky. Dragos, Dragos comes into focus, shrouding... Sh Dragos comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tech. His headset with its glinting eyes, the mark of a drone operator. On his shoulder, one of the symbi symbiotically linked drones. On his shoulder, one of his symbiotically linked drones perches, its irising eye locking you with an inf unflinching stare. Last living sleeper that came through this yard was a while ago. They didn't last long. You struggle to reach. You struggle to read his expression beneath the tech, but he seems lost in memory for a moment, or perhaps he's just figuring out what to do. I plan to survive. You aren't sure if he hears you. I won't ask you what led you to do it, to sell yourself to a corporation. And I suppose you know you can't go back. Your old body, that's theirs now. And you are just... software. A rogue emulation illegally possessing a corporate property. You nod along. You, rem you remember biometrically signing the forms. The cold floor on your feet as you padded to the sleeper cells. Ah, okay. The promise of a life off-world. But as you do, you get, a new you get a now familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. There's things you know, but not things you feel. You are no longer a person. You are an offshoot. A copy. Okay. So, sleepers are people that have put their consciousness into mechanical frames, from the looks of things. What you won't know is what's ahead. At least, the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put it. That body of yours is falling apart. It's the same for any sleeper who makes it out. As an ARP wants to protect their property, but if they can't keep hold of you, well, then no one can. You remember that too, or at least rumors of it from the other sleepers. Planned obsolescence. A built-in dependence on the regularly administered supplements that were part of your routine. Stop taking them and your body begins to shut down. Separate from your emulated mind. How long has it been? How long do you have? But for now, sleeper, you are one of the lucky ones. Dragos glances up and away, towards the glassy dome of the yard. The eye is the best place you could be right now. The station, you'll see soon enough. Dragos impatiently shifts his weight. Look, I've got things to be getting on with, he trails off. There's an old freighter container I've been using as storage out in the stacks. We haven't been pulling much in valuable scrap these days, so you are welcome to it. Something wells up inside of you, emotion. Fatigue. You shakily get to your feet. All right, you head up up. All right, you head on up there. You look like you need some rest. And with that, Drago stalks back into the wrecks. His drones already converging on a rusting hulk. Plasma flashes silhouetting his spindly feet. <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> and with that, Drago stalks back into the wrecks. His drones already converging on a rusting hulk. Plasma flashes silhouetting his spindly feature as he returns to work. Tutorial introduction. All right. Welcome to er welcome to Erlin's Eye. Life on the Eye runs in cycles, during which you can talk to characters, explore areas of the station, and perform actions. 
At the end of each cycle, you head to your current home to rest. Resting will move time forward on the station. Naturally. Head to the empty container to rest and end the cycle. You wake, curled up in the corner of your container, and begin slowly assembling the world around you. After all this time, you still find this body, the one you wake in now, strange and disjointed, its messages readable but somehow wrong. You sit up, pulling the Mylar blanket close against the cold. Here you are, on this ruined station, millions of miles away from anyone you know. Are you still in the system? Did any of the others make it out? It's impossible to know, after all. After all this, what matters? Um... Yeah, why would I want to escape from that? As an engineer, probably getting answers. Getting answers. It all matters. The past is impossible to escape if it remains a blur. What S and Arp did to you cannot be forgotten. You need a way of understanding all of this before you can move on. Where are you? What is this place? What happened to the others? The questions outnumber the answers. You want to change that, but you'll learn to sur You want to change that, but you'll have to learn to survive first. Dragos has left a few comforts in the container. The Mylar blanket, the bedroll you slept on, a canister of water, a makeshift electric stove, and some faded sachets of some desiccated powder. So, I can feel temperature. Apparently I need water. But I guess I'm still in a mechanical construct of some kind? You thumb the power stud of the stove and begin to boil the water. The contents of the sachets smell like damp wood and you sprinkle them into the liquid. So, I also need to eat? <laughs> As the pungent smell washes over you, images of your restless sleep come back to you. A ring, like the station, but skeletal and ghostly. A web of threads pulling at your skin. A constellation of bright polygonal shapes, like angular suns, burning into your mind. There's something unpleasantly visceral about these images, and it is long after you've finished drinking before they begin to fade. You tidy away the stove as best you can and try to gather enough energy to greet the day. Your condition represents the current state of your artificial body. It depletes by one segment each cycle, but can be damaged by violence, injury, or lack of food. If your condition bar empties, you'll suffer a breakdown. Great. So you'll have to figure out how to recover your condition now that you no longer have access to corporate pharmaceuticals. Action dice. At the start of each cycle, you roll your action dice. Okay. Oh, man. Coughing on this game of all games is probably the worst possible scenario. You roll your action dice. These dice can be used to perform actions on the station. The number of dice rolled is based on your current condition. That explains the bar. Okay. The worse your condition, the fewer dice you have. Once you've used your dice, you cannot take any further actions and must rest to recover them. Interesting. Okay. Energy is, at the, th is the third bar. You also have to eat to survive. This is represented by your energy bar. You can refill your energy bar by eating, but first you have to f find somewhere to get food. If it becomes empty, you'll be starving. When starving, your energy depletes by two segments each cycle. Wow, that's a lot. If it becomes empty, if it becomes empty, you will be starving. When starving, energy loss becomes condition loss, and your condition will also deplete at double the rate. Great. Let's leave. Dragos is standing in the corridor when you close up the container. He's still wearing his headset, and in the harsh light of the corridor, you realize it is implanted. That does make sense. A drone sits on his shoulder. Its cache of sensor eyes rapidly irising. How are you feeling? Okay. The drone chirps. Good to hear. You notice that beneath the operator's rig, his skin is marked by burns and blotches. I know the container isn't much, but it'll keep you safe. He pauses. So I'm not going to chit-chat too long. You well enough to work? Sure. All right, then. He nods. At the yard, it's simple stuff. We hack these old hulls down, sell them off to shipyards or the blight or the bright market dealers for cryo. Occasionally we pull out some tech, something with a bit more value, but most of what comes in is scrap. It's hard to find good hands here, but I figure as a sleeper, you'll be used to the manual labor. 
And obviously, I'll slip you a few chits of commission based on what you turn up. Chits? These. He pulls out a handful of small metal bars. Airwald cryo. Isolated from the market. It's what we use for trade out here. He stuffs them back in his pocket. He shuffles his feet nervously. Look, I wouldn't normally do this. In my opinion, you'd be best suited moving on as quick as you can. And sleepers, well, he trails off. But things being the way they are, but things being that the way they are for me at the yard, he pauses. I need the help. Why? Happy to. Okay, he pauses, thinking of something else to add. Look, just come to the yard when you're feeling fresher. There's plenty to do. Will do. He nods distractedly and turns and walks away, the drone hopping along ahead of him. See you later, he calls back. Looks like it's time to get to work. Okay, so this really is traditional RPG style. Kind of like Disco Elysium, but without the walking around. But entirely text and option based. Well, it looks like there's nothing else to do. You can view my character, efficient extractor. Random scrap. Self-repair? Okay, so now I can see more. Use scrap components at home to repair your condition. Transfer intercept. So that's... Okay, so these are the... Oh, these are the perks that each class have. So each class has the starting perk for the particular stat that I think they had plus one in. Which it's not showing I have plus one. Oh, no, there's the plus one. Okay, interesting. Hard to kill. Keep two dice even when your condition is breaking. So this feels more like a survival kind of situation than necessarily an exploration kind of thing. But I guess we'll see how it pans out. Drago's is yard. Actions. They're the primary way you interact with the world of Citizen Sleeper. Perform an action, click and drag your action dice to the slot. Okay. Action dice affect these outcomes. Six is 100%. Wow, 5 is 50, okay, 50% positive, 50% neutral. 4 and below is where you start getting negative chances. Action fails, a neutral, the action succeeds. Positive goes better than expected. Okay, so neutral is still good. Actions reward you with clock progress, energy, condition, or items, depending on their outcome. Got it. So there's action types, the risk of that action. Negative means cryo or energy for risky. Danger, negative means potential condition loss or additional loss. Oh, neutral can mean cry or energy loss. Interesting. So danger, naturally, is dangerous. Let's you know the skill and then any modifiers for that action. Okay. Well, right now, manual salvage is endure. Hold the section, engineer, repeatable action. I feel like I gotta go with hold the section, right? Or is this... Let's go... Okay, so the plus one goes to your action dice. Interesting, okay. In that case, let's do hold a section, plus one makes it 50-50. 50-50 for good or better. Positive outcome. Clocks, actions progress clocks. Clocks are displayed below the actions that fill them. Oh, so that's these. I see, okay. And they uh, and how they affect the world. Filling a clock means something good or bad is about to happen. Something is about to happen. Some clocks, such as the one tracking Dragos' debt, are cycle clocks. These clocks tick themselves once each cycle and can complete without player input. Okay. Any active cycle will be displayed on the icon for that location. I will assume the center of the clock is a positive or negative thing. Um, I think this is all I have to do today. Oh, there's more. Survive, find a doctor. Drives and navigation. You will unlock drives as you discover more about yourself in the world. Drives guide you in pursuing specific objectives. Okay. So they're like waypoints. You can track drives, and any track drive will place a yellow marker on locations that will help you pursue your goal. You're now free to explore Erlen's Eye and make a life for yourself here. Thank you very much. Mouse wheel or WS to scroll along the station and rotate with A and D. Good luck. Whoa. Oh, it is a ring. It did say it's a ring. What is low end gate, right market, rotunda? So these have cycle things. 
They do have cycle clocks. Merchants willing to help run. Okay. Well, there's nothing I can do here. It just naturally will cycle. So these, so it looks like yellow are positive. Whoops. Yellow are positive cycle things, cycle clocks. Red are negative cycle clocks. Um, let's see. Whoops. So leave. Escape doesn't leave places you enter. Let's see if I can find a doctor. Ah, now we have actions. Okay. Engage. No. Dangerous and negative one. Explore the market. Um, local knowledge is the best place. So let's... Because this is dangerous, so this is a four. Yeah. Let's go explore the market. All right. Positive outcome. Got more knowledge. Let's try quarter of a percent chance of negative. Let's go for it. All right, got it. Local knowledge. The bright market is the busiest part of the eyes lower rim. You can find anything and everything here. So now I've filled the clock. New drive discovered. Slum doctor. Okay. Next comes the call from the enforcer at the door. You shuffle down the flickering hallway towards the open apartment door. You keep your head down and your shoulders high in the queue, trying not to bring attention to yourself. You were thankful for the tip-off that a doctor was operating out of this place, but now that you're here, you aren't so sure. The gang enforcer on the door, the flickering light strips, the decaying hab block, they've all made the long queue a test of your nerve. But your options are few, and without a supply of, of stabilizer, this body, your body, will... You suppress a shiver and shuffle forward in the front of the queue. You try to find something to distract yourself. Let's look at the Enforcer. The Enforcer is looking down the corridor and you, you dare to glance at him. His purpose is unmistakable. He's there to intimidate, to threaten, and if necessary, carry out those threats. His broad shoulders are framed with a metal exoskeleton. A couple of mirror-like implants sit below his eyes, like mercury teardrops, subsidiary sense input, or aesthetic markers you aren't sure. You also aren't familiar with the geometric blade-like tattoo on his arm, but you make a note of it. You avert your eyes when he looks back at the queue. After a few moments, a figure pushes through the doorway, and you catch a distant voice. Send the next one in, Toshiro. The enforcer jerks his head and you slip inside passing through the dark entryway and pushing through the plastic sheeting on the far door. The room beyond is bathed in a warm light. A floor to, a floor to, ceiling, the trans, a floor to ceiling transparent panel gives a full view of the bright market's sealed roof and the buzzing traffic above, and, for a moment, you are transfixed by the motion. Come, sit, calls a sharp voice. You see a silhouetted figure turn away, replacing the plastic sheeting over the frame of a simple folding bed. You make your way across the room. Sabine. The figure turns, and as they do, you see an expression of confusion flash across their features. They open their mouth as if to speak, they blink, and then quickly regain their composure. Please, sit. They gesture to the bed, then turn to an open case of tools on the table. You sit, Sabine turns, a compact diagnostic scanner of some kind in their hand. They hold it to their eye. Remain still, please. Their tone is clipped and businesslike. You stare ahead. Stay, you stare ahead, still dazed from their expression when you first entered. Fear, recognition, sadness, unmistakably etched across their face. How long have you been on the station, they ask, the scanner still to their eye. Few cycles. They nod. It's good you came to me. They set the diagnostic scanner on the table. I'm going to start by assuming you don't know anything. They take your arm and roll up your sleeve, inspecting your synthetic skin. Your body is dying. They say it without ceremony, without drama, but not without empathy. s and Arp doesn't like to see its proprietary technology let loose, to prevent bodies like yours, frames as they call them, from being stolen, repurposed, or in your case, escaping. They built, an, they built in a process of so-called plan obsolescence. Frames decay rapidly when not regularly injected with stabilizer, one of which s and Corp remains the sole producer of. They look up. Sound familiar? Yes. Good, that may help. They swap to your other arm, running some thin metal device over your skin. You feel your forearm tremble. I'm sorry, Sabine says, and you're unsure if they mean for the cold touch of... <laughs> and... 
I'm sorry, Sabine says, and you are unsure if they mean for the cold touch of the metal or everything else. Emulations like you, sleepers as most people know you, aren't classified as people in any of the surrogate systems. You have no rights, no status. They focus hard on the inspection of your arm, and SNARP has no reason to really stabilize her into the market. Sabine looks up as if to apologize again, but they stop themselves. I know little of this is of use to you. They turn away, disassembling the metal instrument and cleaning it. So are you saying I'm boned? Sure, I'm sure there's a black market I can get it from, hopefully. Silence fills the room as Sabine works, and then the silence gives way to tension. You stare at their back, willing them to say something, anything. Sabine turns to face you. I may be able to help, they sigh, and you see the darkness under their eyes. You hear the fatigue in their voice. They gesture to the door. You saw Toshiro outside. You nod. He works for my benefactor, Yatagan. They are influential in the low end. They give me the space to work, run the door, and take the profits. At the same time, I have to fix up their enforcers, tend to their implants, sew up their wounds. They look away. But Yatagan has connections. Smugglers from the Starward Belt. Mercenaries working for the corporations on Ember. If they can source the stabilizer, maybe you'll have a better chance. Sabine sets down their slate, their notes complete. This... this is dangerous, and it'll be expensive, but I think we can do it. Why help me? Sabine walks away to the window, their face dappled by the shadows of passing drones. Let's see if this works first. I'll let you know when I have a lead. You nod and leave. Sabine's still staring out, unmoving. When you reach the lower et level of the market, you look back up through the panels of the roof to see if there's... You nod and leave, Sabine still staring out, unmoving. When you reach the lower level of the market, you look back up through the panels of the roof to see if you can see their face, but the room looks dark against the lights of the market. You duck your head and walk off into the crowd. So now I have to wait. Build a ship mine. You've heard of talk of a fabricator owned by the Ort Exchange. With that and a few fragments, you could rebuild a ship mined core. Let's go... Well, I've only got one action left. Let's go ahead and... Engineer. Okay. And then I got a random scrap item, right? Scrap components. Oh, this is just my inventory as a whole down here. Okay. Cryptocurrency. No! Stored in airwalled sticks of memory known as chits. So wait, Dragos is paying me. How do I repay Dragos? Dragos pulled you out of the savage and sa savage and slila. Dragos pulled you out of the salvage and set you up. Perhaps you can repay his kindness in time. He'll pay off his debt. How? Maybe I'll find out later. Well, I'm out of actions. Oh. Emphis is busy, his broad face uplit by the makeshift gas burner in front of him. With precise, delicate movements, he lays thick chunks of marinated fungus into a dented wok, his other hand idly tossing a metal bowl of sliced vegetables and some red fleck dressing. The smell is incredible. You watch as he fulfills a set of orders, heaping the fungus with bright salad and depositing it into plastic trays. A stack of chits rattles in his apron pocket as customers file past the burner, handing over payment. Let's watch. Despite the queue, Emphis doesn't rush. He dresses each portion individually, squeezing precise slugs of liquid from an assortment of bottles into the bowl of torn leaves and bright slices before tossing them loosely together. Ah, yes, a craftsman of sorts. Occasionally, a waiting customer might mutter something about efficiency, but Emphis remains steady in his process. We call this a master. Or at least someone who takes great care in their work. After a while, the queue fades into the crowd and the Emphis sets his bowl, metal bowl down and looks across the burner to see you watching him. I can feel your eyes burning a hole in my bowl. Free sample? Nod. He gestures neatly. Come over. The smell is almost unbearably strong as he cooks. The earthiness of the fungus laced with something so spicy the smoke makes your eyes water. The heat from the burner is like a bonfire and your skin hardens in its glare. I know you, you sleepers, Emphis says while he cooks. Is sleepers good? Is that a good term? 
Hopefully it's good. His voice deep but clear. A hard life. A lot of stories. He glances up from beneath his cap with piercing eyes. I know. Tell him a story. You begin to tell him about your journey to the eye, and he nods as he cooks, his eyes never leaving his work. You tell him of the confusion, the pain, but also the sense of possibility in its sudden arrival. You tell him of the cold and dark of the container, the endless cycle spent within it. Now it seems, you tell him, like some dream that you once had but can never forget. You tell him that the eye excites you and scares you, and you're unsure of where to walk, where to look, what to do. Eventually you tail off, running out of words. He places a plastic tray of steaming fungus in your hand. Next time we can talk some more, he smiles, but next time you pay. Yes, please. He slams a heavy hand against a button on the burner side and it shuts off. The roar of the flame and the impressive heat fades. Next time then, sleeper. He waves you away and begins to oil the walk. Before you turn back to the alley, you notice the geometric patterns of circular scars across his forearms, each surrounding with a constellation of glinting pin marks. You walk away, and as you do, you take a bite of the rich, spicy, delicately sweet fungus. Your taste sensors light up like a fusion reactor. Reactor, you'll be back. Let's go, I'm eating. Get to know Emphis. Low end gate. Pay low end toll. Well, can't do that. Sabine's surgery, there's a sourcing stabilizer. Okay, so that's the waiting. Got it. So all that's really left is working, right? Play the exchange. The flow of chits and components in the exchange is a complex but sharp eye, and you might... And some tight trades can net you a good margin. I can sell scrap. Trusted trader. Oh, so I can earn trader reputation. Let's go ahead and sell, because I don't know what else to use scrap for at the moment. 12 cryo, neutral outcome, plus trusted trader. All right. So I think all that's left now is to sleep. Because I have no more action dice. And I think I've done everything. And if I haven't, well, that's my own fault. This time you don't wake up. Instead, the ghost of the station, that shifting skeletal ring, surrounds you. For a moment you are gone, absent from your own body, stretched out across a colorless void. Then the connections begin to establish themselves, threads tugging on the edge of your mind. These threads become vectors of exchange and then extensions, as you feel your thoughts slipping away down them, dissolving into the millions of distributed nodes they connect to. You see the station. No, you feel the station, like a web of texture in a smooth black liquid. You find a point in the station, and you connect to it, pulse through it. You follow loops and paths under and around it. You touch more points than you have fingers. Then you try, in a moment of impulsiveness, in a moment of impulsiveness, to connect them. The flow passes through you so rapidly that you feel yourself being carried with it, splitting and separating, eddying and gathering. As you do, things occur to you, things that you can't possibly know. You reach out, try to grasp them, try to touch them, too. You notice a tugging feeling pulling at you, insistently, as if it were a small child. Somehow it's pulling in two directions at once. You look down. All of a sudden, everything shuts off. You come back trembling into this unfamiliar body, both yours and not yours, all at once. You find yourself standing in the container, eyes now open to the dark steel walls. You feel a change in you, a shift. You close your eyes for a second, and you feel it waiting there, the station splayed out across your mind, a storm of connective nodes waiting to be explored, and then it's gone. Ooh. Not good. Nice, nice, nice. Um, everything else is kind of boned. <laughs> um.
Um, let's see if I can pay Drago, Drago, Drago for food. Not Drago, Emphis. More energy. Fungus fan. Emphis doesn't trust people easily, but he notices his regular customers in his own quiet way. Okay, that's good. Um, I'm still fading. There's nothing I can do. I've got to wait three days to find out about Stabilizer. I can't afford to go through the low-end gate now. Um, I guess... I mean, this is the only thing I can get a plus one on. Oh, wait, no, there's one more. Oh, but I've already made progress on this clock. Maybe I should just continue. Let's just continue. Nice. And then... 50-50. Nice. Neutral outcome. Alright. We're back in business. Random scrap item. Got some more chits. You arrive into a buzz of activity at the yard. Red blinking lights flash across a very dark shape suspended below the dome. They flicker across scorched hull plates and bent structures, spilling from holes in the twisted shape. The cutter is huge, and has been torn apart from some violent encounter. She's a beauty, isn't she? Drago stands to the side, focusing on the hulking ship as it's lowered into the yard. <laughs> she is, what is it, looks ugly to me. Well, I am an engineer. Chances are I will know what a ship is, so let's go with she is. I should thank you. This place was on its last legs when you turned up, and now look at this. The ship descends slowly, its interior visible through multiple hull breaches. You struggle to gather the same enthusiasm as, Dra as Dragos for this monstrous craft. You can't help but think of what happened to the crew. What happened? What do you mean? I managed to convince our salvager friends to give, me, give it to me on credit. That's what happened. No, what happened to the ship? Not my concern, he shrugs. The ship creaks like a calving iceberg. That's a new word. Calving iceberg as it reaches the base of the yard. Dragos is visibly excited. I know I said you shouldn't stick around, but I'm going to need some help with this one. The drones start to crawl over the hulk, their lights illuminating flashes of dented hull. Watching, you wonder if you arrived in a similar fashion. Inside that, locked inside that container, the wreck of the Essen Arp freighter lowered into the yard like a corpse ready to be butchered. Or was the container delivered to Dragos on its own? A womb for your rebirth in this strange station. You shudder. Perhaps if you could learn something about this ship, you might be able to trace the path that led you to this yard. Dragos squeezes your shoulder. After these past cycles, I think we're up to it. What do you think? You see the f past cycles? It's been one day, right? You see the fading name of the ship emblazoned on the side. Winter Light. Let's do it. He, cl he claps you on the back. Glad to hear it. Come back in a few and we can make a start. A real beauty, Dragos repeats. Perhaps just to himself. You take one last look at the shattered ship as the drones start cutting, and then slip out of the yard, feeling suddenly cold in the empty passage. Upgrade point. Oh, drive complete. Okay. Whoa. Character and upgrades. You've completed your first drive, so drives are quests. Got it. Each drive completed unlocks an upgrade point to spend on upgrading your character. Access your character menu via the arrow button at the top right of your screen. Upgrade points. So I need two upgrade points to unlock this next tier. So I can unlock perks. Do the perks give me the plus one? Can I save before I do this? I cannot save. It's just, it's all auto saves. Okay. Um, I feel like I should go ahead and upgrade one of these. Intuit, predictive reasoning, display potential positive and negative outcomes. I don't know if I necessarily need that at the moment. Chance to gain cryo, chance to allow energy gain. Let's go with chance for cryo. Okay, so you do the perk, and then you can do a plus one, and then you, then you can do the next tier. Okay. So here, doing this would remove my minus one, and then another point would give me the perk, and then another point would give me plus one. Got it. 
Well, there's not much else for me to do, so I think I will... Yeah, I can't do anything about my condition. Because I have to wait two more cycles to hear from Sabine. So I guess let's rest. Again, the skeletal ring of the station fills your mind. It sparkles with glittering lights, like stars reflecting in a winter lake. It's clearer, crisper than before. The threads still pull, but you remain in place, flickering in the flow. Between the threads you see bright shapes, caches of shimmering light beneath transparent crystal forms. You follow the path of a thread across the ring, through these forms, then leap off into the void. You begin to understand. These are nodes and connections, a map of information, of communication. There are so many layers, so many loops that seem almost impossible to parse, but you begin to try. Focus on the nodes. The nodes are glassy, bright, but in all this flow, the only solid and fixed points. You approach one, a pyramid, or a triangle, dimensions are difficult here, and lean close to it. Inside, shifting layers conceal a tangle of threads, a meeting point of exchange. But before you can glimpse any further, the glass clouds the glass clouds and hardens. The glass clouds and hardens, cutting you off. The threads and nodes, passengers and puzzle boxes, one leads to another. There's so much here, so many answers, so many questions. All you need to do is follow the path and open the boxes. You look out across this ghost landscape of exchange and see an opportunity. But then that insistent tugging again. You but then that insistent tugging again, pulling at you. You look down again and see two lines, two threads pulling in different directions, as if they were tied around you. The first thread leads out, away from the station, into the inky black. Someone out there is tracking you, hunting you, following the thread to you. They are in a ship, and the ship is approaching, ever closer with each cycle. The second. The second thread leads in, pulling deep into the station. Your gaze follows it, and this time you see something. A sphere shimmering above a strange, angular body. A pulse shoots out from it, passing over you like a torch beam, testing you, tasting you. You open your eyes. Time is short. I am dying. Hunted. Someone is tracking you. Following your trail, it won't be long before they arrive. Tutorial. The cloud. Something has changed inside of you. You can now access the data cloud of the eye, a network of decaying protocols and data caches. While there, you can use dice and items to interact with syst to access systems and extract data. But be careful, these networks are old and strange. The I button on the top of the screen to toggle this view on and off. Ah, I see. Gotta wait one more day, still fading. Um, let's sell this scrap. I did get... I did get a six, man. Um, wait, let me see what's new with Dragos. Wow. Um, Forensic Troll. Investigating the Winter Light means picking through its systems and structures with care. Cutter salvage. Ship breaking is tougher than it looks, but he's happy to do it and a fixed wage if you're up to it. Dragos' nerve. Seems increasingly nervous about your presence in the yard. Great. So, yard clearance. History no. The ship is salvaged. Dragos says break it down and move on. Forensic trawl. Let's hold off for now. One more cycle to find out about... Stabilizer. Let's order some fungus. I don't know if I want to pay the toll. But at the same time... What else is there to do? You hand over the chits to the Yadigan Enforcer. He nods at you. 
So now I can go further? I can. Low end, play it to Vala. Block maintenance. Helping out is a good way to make friends. Become a low ender. Darn it, I keep hitting escape thinking I'm gonna leave. Uh, what is this? The free spoke. Tourist hub. Enter the spoke. Scale the spoke. Well, that's... Not gonna do that one. Spoke climber. The spoke is layer after layer of dense fabric. Did that say dense fabric? Layer of dense urban fabric. The only way to explore is vertically. So... Okay. Founder's gap. Gap in the ring station. Pay for passage. Okay, so that unlocks more of the station. Um... Let's see, Drago's helped me. I'm still waiting on Sir. I need money, probably, actually. Let's try this. Yard clearance, more cryo. Yard clearance, more cryo. All right. High rolling like crazy. Shipyard. The other thing I can do here is assist a shipbuilder. Haul materials. As a newcomer, you can only gain favor by grabbing a load of materials and asking the nearest yard hand where to take them. Assist a shipbuilder. Hmm. Get to know Empis. Study. Let's go. Let's go with study the winter light for now. Let's focus on that. Forensic Troll. 100% positive without any bonuses. Got a scrap item. Let's sell that scrap. And I'm out of time, so, or out of dice, so here we go. But we find out more about the stuff that we need from Sabine. Hunted, ooh, a one. As you close up, a voice echoes down the corridor towards you. Sleeper, wake up, turn. Fang is coming down the corridor towards you, a wonky grin on his broad face. Hey, glad I caught you. Do I know you? You do now. He puts a hand on your arm. I've seen you hanging around, just want to chat. You staying in that thing? He nods back into the container, shaking his head. Rough, it can be hard to get a start on the eye. He looks away down the passage. What was it old Erlen said? The eye opens for us all. Nice idea, but, well, not always very practical. He glances back at you. We do our best, but it isn't easy. We? You pass together into the main walkway. Havenage. We're all one dysfunctional family. Fang puts an arm around you. I'm not part of the security branch, though. Don't worry, I'm with systems. Havenage? Think of us as an administrative association for the eye. Oh, so government? Depending on who you talk to, we either emerge as a response or a continuation of Andre Erlin's original union. He smiles. Personally, I avoid the topic. He stops you in the quiet passage. Look, that's not what I'm here to discuss. I've seen some... I've been seeing some unusual network activity, and, well, I know a little about you sleepers. I have a small proposition for you. He glances around. But this is not the place for it. I have an office just across the way. Give me a cycle or two to prepare. Then, when you're ready... Then, when you're settled, stop by. He lowers his voice and gives you a dark look. In truth, I need you. If what they say about... If what they say is true about you sleepers, well... There's work to be done. He pats you on the back, his voice bright and his dark look suddenly gone. Stay clean, sleeper. He walks down the passage, raising a hand in farewell. I think I've got to stop here. I'm not used to talking this much and my voice is about to give out. Um, I really, I really dig this so far. It's building a world. It's very, it's very word heavy, which honestly, as an RPG, a traditional RPG, I should have expected. But yeah curious to see how this all pans out. Mm -hmm.